Welcome to episode seven of my imperfect knitting life. This is a podcast or a space where I talk a little bit about my knitting and my mini commercial spinning mill. So I live in New Zealand on the North Island and I live on a small one acre section and I bought a mini commercial spinning mill which I want to use to take a lot of the local fleece and turn that into yarn. So what I'm going to do is talk a bit about my knitting and then I'm going to give you an update of the spinning mill which seems to be of interest to a lot of people so thank you so much for coming and spending some time with me here if you do like my channel please subscribe or and give it a thumbs up i love to read your comments and i do try and answer them but i don't always get to it straight away but i really love to read the comments and i'm very very grateful for all the positive feedback and all the positive suggestions that people have given me um in the comments over those last few episodes so to start off with i think i will talk about my knitting so it's summer here as you can see and um, from my beautiful flowers out of my garden i'm going to show those off first actually because look at these now i know that anybody in the northern hemisphere is in the midst of winter and probably having cold and wet and these came out of my garden i just picked them maybe half an hour ago, because I thought it would be nice to have some on the podcast. And I love these old fashioned daisies. There's actually quite a story behind these little daisies, which I might even tell you right now. So when I lived in Christchurch, which is on the South Island, the house that we had, had just a whole um, section of the driveway full of these beautiful daisies. And I loved them so much. And, um, we moved away from there and we moved to the North Island when I became a midwife and um, well, was starting to practice. So I came up to Rotorua to do that. And well, I hadn't actually seen any of those around here, but I have since then. My son was living down there and he and his partner managed to get me a cutting of um, the daisies down there. And I planted those at a little cottage that we had here. I've since sold that cottage and when I went back down to Christchurch with a friend um, in January, oh, it must be, yeah, a whole year ago, these were in bloom and we were walking past um, a house and there was um, loads and loads and loads and I, and she said, oh, well, let's just knock on the door and see if, if, if we can get you a cutting. And we knocked on the door and there was this lovely, lovely lady, she must have probably been in her late 80s maybe even her in her 90s and was still living in her little house and um and she quite happily said nope dig some bits out so we got a bucket and we dug out some plants and took loads of seed heads which she gave me and I brought them home and um, my friend told me the other day that she passed and the flowers were in bloom again and that she was going to knock on the door and see if she could get some cuttings so she was such a lovely lady and she also had in her house she had obviously done lots of knitting and crafts and stuff like that so we had a little talk to her and look around um look around at the things that she did and she was you know just such a genuine sweet lovely lady so I was very grateful for that anyway I digress let's get back to the knitting so with it being summer I've been knitting light things easy things and things for the grandchildren so just my usual basic you've seen it before so this is one of the getting biggers and what I'm also trying to do is stash bust. So this is a Peyton's, a Peyton Isle wool, which is a sock wool. And um, I'm not actually sure which little person that's going to be for, but that's one of them. And then again, the same pattern. Oh, I must actually tell you a little bit more about this. So it is actually one of the few flat pieces I've knitted and I want to show you the difference between this one and the blue one. So I had one ball of wool and I had to make it last. So I ended up having to make even shorter short sleeves. And you'll see that when you see the second one I made, which is this one. So these are for a three-year-old and um, you can see here, that's the length of that the sleeves ought to be, but I, was running out of wool so they're super short i'm pretty 
pretty sure it'll look very cute still and i will show you a picture hopefully of whichever little recipient of these gets the top they're very popular as i said with the mamas and then i actually bought um i spied this um little kitty top well it actually goes from naught up to 12 years old i think of the magnolia but i thought i'm gonna have a just have a little knit up and see how that knits up with other yarns so i knitted this up in what i think is a double knit and or an eight ply or a worsted weight i'm not sure what you call it in america i think it's a worsted weight and what i love about this is it's top down all in one and goes to the bottom so it's meant to have the magnolia i'll pop in a picture of the pattern it's meant to have the magnolia pattern at the bottom um but i just wanted to knit it up and see what it knitted like and i'm actually really happy with that and i stuck you know how i like my bees i stuck a little bee button on there so we'll just see the mama might want to take it off if she thinks it is a dangerous for the baby but this is actually made for little um sophie who's only five months old now but this is meant to fit six to twelve months so hopefully that fits her beautifully so those are my three knits that i've done in the last few weeks but what i did find my my daughter actually gave me the um original magnolia that i made and i've talked about my magnolia in previous episodes i can't even remember who made it who did the pattern so i'll have to show you but that is actually the magnolia pattern all right so this is knit up with the holstgarn and the um silk mohair and i actually knitted this first one up for myself but once i started knitting it i just didn't really like the color on myself i just thought it washed my washed me out a little bit but it suited my daughter-in-law really well so i finished it off and i gave it to her but what happened was in my true imperfect knitting lifestyle i actually started the magnolia too early and it ended up being would have been a three-quarter sleeve but she did not want a three-quarter sleeve she said oh i'd really like something very long that goes over my wrists so that's basically what i did so let me just try and stand back and show you this um yeah so that's basically what it looks like it's also top down in the round and you can see now actually they are you know the construction is very similar it's a twisted rib and then you separate it under the arms and on this one i did the magnolia and then i did the twisted rib all the way down past her wrists and she loves it i actually quite like it too just a shame it's just not a color i don't think that suits me but anyway ollie got that and she's happy with it and my job now is actually just to give it a wash so that she can have it ready for next winter um one thing i've learned is uh when i give things especially to family um if you're not confident washing it i'm happy to wash it for you so just give it back and i'll give it a wash and then you can get it back to wear again because we've had a few ruined items because people don't know how to wash um wash their jerseys quite frankly if you don't have synthetic in the jersey you don't need to wash your jerseys very much at all it's mostly giving it a good air really or what they call an air wash anyway i'm waffling again as you know but also what i found when i was just sorting things out was i haven't really done a lot of color work but last year i did get an alice starmore's um, book of fair on knitting just to get some stitches and i thought oh I might have a little go at making myself a cowl and just using some of the leftover bits of yarn that I've got. I've got no idea whatsoever what yarn I used in this, but I thought that this would be just a little something to keep my neck warm. And, you know, it's nice and neutral. I don't actually know that I love how it fits. If I made it again, I might actually make it a little smaller so that it fits a bit better. I'm not going to make it again it's just it was a little practice something to do in fact maybe ollie would like it because it goes quite nicely with this top we'll see but that 
is basically all of the knitting I have to show you. I have actually started um, a magnolia for my granddaughter, um, Laura. And I, you know, I'm going to have stuck a picture somewhere in there so you at least um, know what I'm talking about in case I, you haven't seen the video or the podcasts before. But I don't know why I've got to think about the magnolia. It's not only me. Every time I've made it, um, people have said, oh, I love that. And of course, the little people in the family are always wanting me to make them things. And I've promised another one of these, in fact, to my other daughter-in-law, Adrian, except she wants to have slightly different sleeves um, and she wants the magnolia lower down with a shorter cuff so that will be coming um, in the next few months because I really need to get knitting that um, so that it's ready before winter comes and uh, yeah so that's coming up soon anyway knitting is done so what's the next step it's probably talking about the mill so last time we spoke I was about to go away on holiday and just before going away on holiday I was going to have a nice chat with Junction Fibre Mill and if you remember Junction Fibre Mill are in Vermont in America and they have literally the same setup as me um, with the um, Carter Pindrafter and Spinner so I somehow spied them and I just think I was looking up many commercial mills and, and found their um, millcast or podcast and and then got into contact with them and they have just been absolutely wonderful helping me and encouraging me and they just know their machines pretty well so um, they gave me some good information on, on, on the pin drafter. So since I saw you or spoke to you last um we had this big long chat and um then i went away on holiday literally the next day we went away to the beach for a week and had a wonderful time um at the beach so i'm going to digress again because you know i've got this water beetle brain that my husband keeps um talking about and now you're going to experience that so we went to the beach which is in ohopi which is on the east coast and it's such a beautiful little um seaside place the beach is wonderful because it's flat it's great for kids they can bodyboard um, paddle um, and it's a nice safe swimming beach as well it did rain a couple of days so we took them off to see avatar in 3d and that was fun um, five kids my husband myself and um, but there were some really good days too and then the last couple of days my um, daughter-in-law came and stayed a couple of nights with her little people and that was good fun too um, anyway so when I got back from my holidays I actually was feeling a little intimidated about getting into the pin drafter again and actually a little overwhelmed so I just didn't even know what to do at that point and I thought you know what I'm just going to take the machine and just strip it down and clean everything and just Kind of connect so that's what I did we took the the um, faller bars out of the machine so the faller bars are basically the cones and um, I think last time when I spoke to you I sort of explained about how um, the fleece as it came out the other side wasn't being thinned out or straightened out and it kept breaking so um, I you know when I looked at the bottom that they were really quite you know dirty and had fleece all over them so took all of the faller bars out cleaned them all up and then went back in there and put the faller bars back in so the top ones were easy to do um I put the bottom ones in thinking I had taken a photo of the orientation of how they'd gone in but I hadn't so then I stood there and looked at the machine and I was thinking and I was like no, it needs to be like this because as they come through, there's two sets and obviously the combs join and then drag the wool, the fleece. And so I put them in and then as I put them in and started turning, I realized I had them in upside down. And so instead of meeting in the middle, 
the combs. So let's imagine that's the top of the faller bar here. Well, the top of the faller bar here, or the, you know, the hard edge on the bottom lot should be at the bottom. But I hadn't. I put the, I orientated them the same way, and so they were in upside down. And then when I moved it, well, it it jammed. It got stuck, and um, I managed to take all the top top bars off the bottom layer off but I couldn't move it around and it was such a conundrum I was like oh my gosh I actually felt sick to my stomach that I probably I thought oh my god I've broken the machines completely and walked away and left it just didn't know what to do and then I went back and looked at the machine and thought well if I can remove these two particular bits I could probably lift out the ones that were in the bottom and um, so my husband and I went down and tried to dismantle these bits, but we couldn't do it. Um, I had to also go away and buy some Imperial Hex. What do they call them? I call them, well, Hex. I have no idea what they're called. I'm so sorry. Um, Allen Keys. Yeah, hex Allen keys, whatever they were. So I had metric set, but I didn't have an imperial set. And I'm like, well, this is an American machine. So that's probably why I don't have the right size. So I went off and bought those and brought them back. And yes, managed to undo the um, screws with the hex bars. Uh, but we could not get the two bits out. So I thought maybe we had to completely dismantle it and then left it, walked away. And then the next day I... My son, James, the oldest boy, he came along and he looked at it and he said, Mum, I do think that that's where it needs to come out. Maybe we just need to give it a bit more force. And so we were nervous because, you know, like, is it that you're going to take something and make it even worse and break it even more? If that's possible. I mean, broken's broken. So he stuck a sort of a chisel behind it and then we just sort of hammered it and it loosened itself off got the bits off, got the faller bars out and then tried to run the machine and then it wouldn't run at all. And we were like, okie dokie, but we could manually rotate it. So I did remember that a, a Amanda had told me something about um, rotating that at the back. I'm waffling. I'm really waffling, but hopefully this makes some sense to you. I don't really know how, how, how else to explain it. But anyway, I managed to have another conversation with Amanda this morning and she solved the problem of why it wouldn't turn. And I remember Julie telling me that she'd had the same thing happen to her just before the machines had moved. And the motor at the back, there are two wheels that have to align and then there's like this plastic pin that joins the two wheels together so that they rotate together and move the cogs and the plastic thing had snapped. And um, so I had to hammer that through, put a new plastic thing through and cut them to size. I mean, this really for me is very technical. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that um, if you're mechanically minded, it all makes a lot of sense, but I've learned so much about the machines and how to do all of this stuff. So that's all ready to go, and I'm going to put the faller bars in later and have a go at running some fleece through. Tomorrow, I have a commercial electrician guy who knows a bit about machinery coming, and he's going to have a look at how the motors run, because that was something else that... Um, lovely Amanda and um, Peggy had told me about and that was that their motors run at a very different speed to mine and they don't adjust the two motors. Remember I told you before that I have to adjust two of the motors. They don't adjust two of them, only just one. They adjust the coiler and they adjust that while it's running. So they have little dials on the front. I don't have dials and so I want to see about getting the dials put on the front or how I can do that. Um, while the machine's running, um, perhaps just with the, the little pads, the keypads that I've got at the moment. So tomorrow someone's going to come and have a look and hopefully move it along a little bit more. Um, yes, and 
my friend Judy's going to come and we're going to have a play with the machine and see if we can run some fleece through. So watch the space. I'm going to hopefully have more to show you within the next short while. Like I said, don't want to give you dates, don't want to give you times because I can't stick to them. As well as the mill, I have been working. So I've been doing some midwifery and I've been on call for the hospital because um, they've got a massive shortage of uh, midwives and they're having to do um, case loading for women in the community. And, and it, it just makes it, I think, so much easier for them when they've got somebody on call. And I've been doing some short shifts. I made one big mistake and that was I did a night shift and I really... I think if I go there with a birth and I'm working and I'm on my feet and I'm thinking, it's totally different to when you're waiting for people to come in and you're, you know, it's not that you're not doing anything, but it's a different headset to um, when you're actually with somebody in labor. And I really struggled. So, you know, when you go with somebody in labor, you're working. Then when you finish what you're doing, then it's time to go home. But when you're working on a shift, you're sitting there and then you get up and you do things and you come back. That It's just just not for me. I can't do night shifts anymore. Um, if I go in and I do a three hours for them, that's great. Or a four hours, that's great. But eight hours of being on shift, well, I just getting too old for that now. I can't do it. I, it's not, of course I can do it. It's the recovery afterwards that's difficult. And I don't want to do the recovery anymore. So I'm going to not do that again. Right. Waffling even more. Thank you so much for persevering with me, sharing my journey and, um, and your interest. I will keep you posted on the next bit. I just feel in my bones like yesterday, three days ago, in fact, if you'd sort of said to me how things are going, I was literally in tears. I just got very emotional when I was thinking about that I was hit this wall and I just wasn't sure how I was going to move it forward but yesterday today I'm feeling so much more positive about the fact that I'm going to get something going and I'm going to get it moving and I'm going to get onto the spinner and I'm going to be showing you that and then when I've got all of that done then I've got to think about what I'm going to do with it because I'm going to have to sell it um, and I'm going to have to think about how I'm going to do that. There was actually one other thing I was going to add on to this, and this was about how I get my wool. I think I've explained to you that I do have um, somebody I know. It's actually one of my old clients. Her husband does small flock shearing. Um, he does a lot of other um, farm maintenance, but he does small flock shearing. And he, uh, he, when he goes around, very often these Farmers or lifestyle people are literally throwing the wool away. So the one lot of wool I got, which I was going to call my Phoenix wool, because I literally went to the farm and took it off a fire pile. So it was a whole pile of stuff that was being burned and on top of it was the fleece and then they were just like flicking it into the fire as it went along. So I went there and just got whatever hadn't quite got to the fire and um, shoved it into duvets, stuck it in the back of my car and drove home with it. But now Kane and um, Alana, they actually have wool sacks or wool fudges, which I've given them. And they ask the, the, the people, what do you want to do with your wool? If you, if you don't want it, I know somebody who's just started this mini commercial mill, blah, blah, and explained it to them. And most of them, say take it uh, in fact i think everyone has said take it or take some of it and um and so then we do this little swap see i give them the wool fudge back and then they fill it up with wool and give it to me so one time i will show you what that's like when i go and pick it up i'll do like a little video or something like that but also what has happened was i had um well, Kane told me about um, somebody else who's um, got 150 sheep and um, that he would ask him whether or not he was happy to give me some of the, the, the wool, which he is. So now I've got three wool, wool sacks I've got to go and collect, which I'm not going to fit in my car. I don't have a tow hitch. I have an EV, so it's an electric vehicle. You can't put a tow hitch on it. And I don't, my trailer 
we don't even have a tow hitch. Roger or I don't have one. So I have to borrow a car with a tow hook on it and then use somebody else's trailer to go and pick it up. So this very kind person has offered to drop it off for me. Um, and so I'm going to let him do that. Drop it off and maybe I'll have a little chat with him about his sheep. Um, he said he has a lot of different kinds of sheep and I think he's quite keen that he might even get um, get some sheep that, or sort out some sheep that are, are much more suited to um, making yarn with. So watch the space on that one. I'm going to have a little chat with him too. Because um, one of my goals or dreams is that I can work with somebody who is happy to produce fleece for the mill and um, that we use it for the mill and it's fine if it's dual purpose so by dual purpose I mean for meat as well as sheep but I, I you know obviously I just don't like the fact that this wool gets thrown away and isn't valued for the, the most amazing product that it is and how wonderful wool is so I'm going to see what I can do about that now thank you so much Wiffle waffled again flitted from one topic to the other but we've got to the end of it now and I'll put some pictures up Red's away he's she's gone on a little sleepover with my son in fact when he came and helped me fix up the mill yesterday I opened the his van door dog hopped in so I said well take her and I was going to pick her up yesterday but then I thought no nah, she can stay the night and today I'm going to go and get her so there's no little red noises around but I do have some videos of walks and things that we've been on and she just loves hopping in the lake she's a real water dog she loves all of that so I'm going to put some of those up as well and I'm just wishing everybody just the best day ever and hope that you've got some great things on board that you're doing and send me some pictures and put them in the comments I'd love to see them um, you can also email me I've got, I'm going to pop my email in the information there I'm on Instagram if you want to connect with me there as well I'll put all of that information in the comments uh, it might take me a couple of days to get to that but feel free thank you so much take care bye